All right, welcome back. Now we're going to look at section 6.6. .6. This is a bit of a long section. Um, there's lots of stuff going on in it. We're going to look at some of the starters. So this is applications to physics. So, so uh, some real world applications of antiderivatives. Uh, some of the ground level ap applications to physics. So before we do that, we need to set up some of the basic language and recall some of the basic things about uh, about physics and how these things are related. So just remember that mass is density times volume. So this is a basic physics rule. Uh, force is mass times acceleration. Work is force times distance. And those are the three that we have to start with. All right, so We'll come back and talk about all of these in a bit more detail as we get into things. But also remember some units. Units can play a, a key role and be a source of confusion. So we've got a cut. We're, we're going to be looking at two different systems of units. We're going to be uh, looking at the English system of units and the international system of units, which is often called the SI system of units. And so we're going to need to talk about mass, acceleration due to gravity. Uh, we'll need to talk about force, and distance shouldn't be too much of a trouble, and distance. So mass in the SI units, this is what most people are, are used to, kilograms or grams. So the gram is a basic unit of mass and the SI units. And acceleration due to gravity, better than units, we'll need to keep in mind that it's 9.8 meters per second squared. A force in the international uh, units is, remember that force is, uh, well, so force is mass times acceleration. So, uh, but th that is given its own name in the SI units, and so we call this a Newton. A Newton. It's, it is mass times acceleration, which is uh, kilograms, meters per second squared, but we call that a Newton. And so we should also say work. So work uh, or distance over here, well, that's just meters. That's, that's nothing tricky there. And work is force times distance. Force times distance would be Newton meter, but we also give that its own name. We call that a joule. So that's a Newton meter. Force times distance. In the English system, We'll come back to mass in a second. Nobody ever talks about mass in the English system. Acceleration, uh, so this is 32 feet per second squared. That's acceleration in the English system. A force is what everybody's used to when we talk about weight. Uh, your weight, if we talk about it in the English system, is pounds. Distance. We'll be using feet most of the time. Work, remember, is force times distance. Over here, that's Newton meters, and we call that a joule. We actually don't have any good uh, a separate uh, word to talk about work over here. And it is just going to be called force times distance, which is really we're going to put them in the opposite order. But we're going to call it a foot pound. Mass, there actually is a word for mass, but nobody ever uses it, so very few people have heard of this. But slug 
is the appropriate unit for mass in the ANGUS system. We're never even going to really have to worry about that. We're only going to use these things down here, but we'll, we'll use all of these on this side. Okay. Okay, so let's start small. All right, so suppose that I've got a cylinder and it's got constant density. And let's say that the density, so our symbol for density is often going to be this delta, a lowercase delta. And so the density will be, uh, let's use our SI units. So what will the units of density be? Re remember that mass is density times volume. So density is mass divided by volume. So the density in this case, let's say it's 10 kilograms for every unit volume. The volume in this case will be meters cubed. So the volume in that in the SI units will be meters cubed. So suppose that that's constant density, 10 kilograms per meter cubed. What is the mass? Well, the mass is the density times the volume, uh, so we need some more information. Suppose that this is 3 meters and this is 2 meters. So the mass is density times volume, which is 10 times the volume. The volume of a cylinder is pi r squared. That's the area of the circle multiplied by the height gets me the volume. And so that's, that's about as simple as it can get. What if we have something that's a bit more complicated? Suppose that we still have the cylinder Suppose that the height is still 3 meters, and the radius of the top is still 2 meters. Suppose that the cylinder is built in a way so that the density is not constant. Suppose that the density depends on where we are in this position. Suppose that the density, h units from the top, depends on h, so I'm thinking about moving down h units, and I have the slice, which is this little circle. So the density at all points in this circle is depends on the height. All right, so maybe this is e to the h. All right, so as the height goes down, as I move down, then the density gets greater, which means that it's going to have more and more mass as we move towards the bottom. So it's getting denser and denser and denser as we go down. Okay, so our idea here is to look at this little slice, h units down from the top, and let's thicken it just a little bit. All right, let's thicken it, and let's call it delta h. So suppose that it's delta h units thick. Since if delta h is small, then we can pretend that the density is constant. And then if we pretend that the density is constant, then it behaves just like our very first question, where we had a constant density question. And then so the, the mass, our question is still, what is the mass of this object? Well, if the density is constant on the small slice, the mass will be the volume times the density. But the density is delta at h. Right, because h units down, that's what the density is. So now I just need to know what the volume of this piece. But the volume is pi times r squared, r is 2. Times the height. But now we're not looking at the height of the whole thing. We're looking at the height of just the small piece which has height delta h. 
right, so this is the area of that slice right here. And if I multiply by the thickening factor, I get the volume. And if I multiply by the density, I get the mass. So this gives me the mass of the small slice. Now we're not going to go through a whole Riemann sum. That's sort of the idea with all of the sections in this chapter. We apply an approximation technique. We turn it into a Riemann sum. We take a limit, which turns it into an integral. But hopefully you can see that what's going to happen if we apply that whole process. This is the mass of a small slice. If I want the mass of the entire thing, I'm going to add everything up. But everything, adding everything up becomes an integral. And so we will have delta of h pi times 2 squared. When we look at integrals, delta h becomes dh. And then we need to integrate across the entire region. h is my variable. So I need to integrate across the entire region which h is made up of. And h up here starts at 0. Right? h is the distance down from the top. h at 0 is, uh, so 0 means starting at the top. And then it goes all the way to 3 because that was the height of the cylinder. So we get integral 0 to 3. Density is e to the h pi times 2 squared. That's pi r squared. dh is the thickening factor, turning it into volume. So again, this is volume. And then I get volume times density to make mass integrated across the whole region. All right. Let's take a look at force. Remember that force is um, mass times acceleration. And also remember that work, so we'll say force and work together. And work is force times distance. Okay, so uh, a couple of things. Right, so what does this mean? This means that if I take uh, if I take a book and this book weighs five pounds. And I push that book, uh, I raise that book up in the air three feet. Then the work that I've done is the force times the distance. Remember that pounds is already a force. So this answer is 5 times 3, which is 15 foot pounds. If I take a book. which is five kilograms, and I raise it up in the air three meters, the work that I've done is force times distance. But kilograms is not a force, it's a mass. In order to turn that into force, I need to say mass times acceleration. So this is our five times the acceleration due to gravity, which is 9.8. This makes a force. And then when I multiply by the distance moved, it turns into work. But remember, our units for work is newtons, sorry, is joules in the SI units. All right. So. It's a bit more complicated than that. Suppose that we start with a tank that's in a cylindrical shape, and its height is 4 meters, and its radius is 3 meters. And suppose that it's filled with a liquid. Of constant density. And 
density will be a thousand kilograms per meter cube. So we're in the SI system since we've got meters, and density will be in kilograms per meter cube. My question is, how much work does it take if I wanted to pump, lift all of that liquid to the top of the cylinder and then let it uh, flow wherever I need to flow? So you might think about this as being a tank that's under the ground that's filled with water or oil, and we need to pump it all up to the surface. And I need to say, how much work does it actually take? So our idea is the same as the idea that we used when we calculated the total mass. Right, so we need to say, all right, let's look at a small slice, h units down. So we look at a small slice, h units down. Now I can pretend that that's like a book that has to raise up h units. And I can calculate the mass of that slice. And if I calculate the mass, then mass times acceleration makes force. Force times distance, which is h. Force times distance makes work. And then I need to add up the contributions of all of the slices. Okay, so we're going to do that by taking a slice h units down, thickening it to a thickness of delta h, and then say, what's the mass of that slice? The mass of that slice will be the volume times the density. The volume is pi times r squared, and r is 3, pi r squared. That's the multiplied by the height, which is delta h. So that gives me the volume. And then the density is 1,000. And so that's the mass of my small slice. So what's the work to pull that slice up? Well, the work to pump that slice up is the force, which is mass times acceleration. So I get this pi times 3 squared times 1,000 times delta H, but then also multiplied by 9.8. So then I get a 9.8. That's force times acceleration, uh, mass times acceleration, which makes force. And then I need to say how far does that, so this is like my book. Now I know how much it uh, weighs, I know what its force is. Then I need to say, how far does it move? Well, it moves h units. That's the distance that it moves. So this is the mass. This is the force. And then force times distance makes work. And that's the work for one small slice. If I want to contribute the work of all of the slices, I need to add them all up. But adding them all up becomes an integral. And so my integral will be exactly what we got. I'm going to rearrange things. 9.8 pi 3 squared 1,000 h. I'm going to put the d delta h again, turns into dh when we talk about integrals. We always put that at the end. And then I need to ask, what's the variable? The variable is h. We had a picture that looked like this, and h was the distance down from the top. Right? And so what does h, where does h start and where does it end? Well, it starts at height 0, and it ends at the height of the entire cylinder, which was 4. So this integral will represent the work that it takes to pump that liquid up. All right, and that's the basics. Um, we're going to spend a lot of time in class looking at, at these and expanding on those.